Hey guys, well, you know what's going on when you see the kitchen table and this green tablecloth here. Yeah, so they're right. We got another quarter jet video on board. Uh, we're actually probably going to make three videos in this series. So let me show you what we're looking at. This is a carburetor that has struck fear into the hearts of mechanics for years and years and years. This is a computer controlled quarter jet. Uh, some people call them different names, but mostly computer controlled quarter jet. These were used on certain V8 engines through the 80s General Motors products, uh, normally always cars. Uh, this particular is an Oldsmobile version. You notice it has the front inlet fuel inlet. Uh, they also use this uh, this computer control Q-Jet on like uh, 305s through the 80s, like in cars. But this uh, predominantly was used on the Oldsmobile 307s, like Delta 88s, 98s, Cutlass, things like that, custom cruisers. Um, this carburetor in a dual jet two barrel version which didn't have a secondary side to it they're also used on like Buick V6's um, same deal anything I talk about as far as the primary side of the carb it's gonna be the same so so yeah uh, many older guys probably have seen these carburetors and probably dreaded to see them when they came in your shop or you had to work on one and I'm with you on that I used to think that these carburetors were the work of the devil um, I thought it was something that you never could understand. Uh, I just didn't like them. And I won't go as far to say that I like them now, but I know I know a lot more about them. So I thought I would just talk about them in these videos and we'll actually dig into this one and see what we can see in it and hopefully let you understand these a little bit better, how to tune them. So... Uh, now one thing I want to note, you notice this carburetor has two connections, two electrical connections up here on the top on the air horn and one right here facing front. Now certain General Motors trucks like GMC Chevy trucks with a 305 or 350 engine through the 80s before they went to fuel injection used a quarter jet but it'll only have one plug up here, it'll only have a plug right there, it will not have this plug. Now that's not exactly electronically controlled quarter jet because that plug when you have when you don't have this one but you have that one that is a plug for a dual stage uh, accelerator pump and that's something pretty specific to a truck and a van application so it's really its own carburetor it's not really related to these that much so we're not going to talk about it in this video we're just going to concentrate on this one so anyway, I thought I'd start out by telling you what the computer controls on these carburetors and what it does not. Um, first of all, the computer does not control the choke. Now this one's missing some of the choke apparatus. This is just a kind of a parts carburetor now. But the computer does not control any part of the choke on these carburetors. It's, it's, it's choke is exactly like any other quarter jet ever made for whatever kind of engine it's on. Uh, another thing that con the computer does not control at all is the secondary side of the carburetor, meaning this part back here. Secondary metering rods, hangers, air doors, flaps on the bottom, linkage, it's all the same as a standard quarter jet. has nothing to do with the computer, ever. So, uh, now like I said, once again, this is missing some parts on it, so that's kind of irrelevant, but... Uh, it also does not, where the vent connects here, uh, it does not control the venting of the carburetor. Now, there's a footnote to that. Most of these carburetors are on 307 Olds engines, and those 307 V8 Oldsmobiles have a nightmare of vacuum lines on them. They have vent lines all over the place. They have solenoids. They have this. They have that. It's a booger. So, uh, you're still going to have some maybe some things that are controlled with the venting away from the carburetor but not on the carburetor itself. Uh, this one has this uh, vacuum operated kicker for the, the, the idle over here. This is purely at, at the carburetor this is purely vacuum operated. There's no, if there's no wiring to it, which there's not, then it ain't controlled by the computer. So now like I said, on those engines there may be something over out here 
that's got electrical solenoid or relay or whatever that may indirectly affect things that go to the carburetor but they don't they don't you know if it ain't got a plug on it it's not controlled by it so uh, also idle mixture is not controlled by the computer on these now these have a from the late 70s onward these quarter jets had capped off idle um, screws and as you can see these have been chipped out get to get access to them you can get taken you see where it's kind of it's got cut marks on it that's a common thing to do uh, you just take a small hacksaw blade or whatever something similar and make some cuts and you can there's a little metal cap that's pressed in here you can pry that cap out on each side and then uh, get to this screw now that said these screws don't they don't have the fine-tuning adjustment the older carburetors had these have more of a uh, just it either goes from lean to leaner if you know what I mean but that's how you get access to them and I'll show you the tool in another video that adjusts these things so so okay let's recap real quick what, what did I just tell you about uh, what the computer does not control doesn't control the choke doesn't control the secondary side doesn't control the idle if there's no plug there's not and it does not control the idle mixture uh, at least not you know not with this part with the screws at all so all right so what does the computer control well it's very simple the computer controls the mixture of the carburetor and we're talking about off idle onward we're talking about almost completely talking about the primary side of the carburetor uh, now I say almost completely because even the secondary side kind of you know it ties in with your your overall uh, meter your mixture of the carb uh, you know the primary even plays a small part in that but so let's let's talk about this now you are probably wondering well how does it control the mixture well you see these two plugs up here this plug here I know most people that don't like these carburetors probably think this is mystery plug number one and this is mystery plug number two well this mystery plug number one here this is the connector for the throttle position switch throttle position sensor excuse me so the actual name for it and this actually does have a throttle position sensor just like a fuel injected vehicle works exactly the same it has three connectors it has a 5 volt reference signal fed into it it has a ground and it has a return signal that comes out and goes back to the ECM so when you move the throttle uh, for example that that sends a signal back to the computer it tells you where your foot's at now you say well where is it well it is down in the carburetor and we'll see that in another video but here's the access to it right here you see there's a driven in little plug right with my thumbnail if you want to ever adjust this thing and you adjust them just like you do a regular TPS on any other engine uh, you get access to carefully whittle away at this and get to where you can pull that plug out and there's a small little adjustment in there you get the right kind of tool I don't remember what it is and I'm not gonna pull this one out but that's where you adjust it so that's real simple I used to not know that but that's how that works so this thing runs with a TPS on it and actually it also uses a map sensor and it probably also for sure uses a seven wire um, distributor module which interprets RPM for the computer so basically the computer knows it's just like a fuel injected engine for the most part it knows load it knows throttle angle it knows engine RPM um, I'm not sure if those engines those I'm talking mostly about a 307 I don't think they use an intake air sensor they might do it I don't remember but I, it may have a separate coolant temperature sensor but in other words, a computer on one of these cars actually uh, uses most of the same inputs as a like a TBI engine uh, that that came right after it. 
So it's pretty simple. So how does it control the mixture, you're asking? Okay, well, after it gets the TPS input and the inputs from everything else that it reads, also use the oxygen sensor. I almost forgot about that one. Those use that. Uh, this is just a two-wire. Run you around here. You can see that. That's just a two-wire plug there. That is a uh, mixture control solenoid called an MCS. And I'm going to show you in the next video exactly what it looks like and kind of show you its operation, but as best I can. But essentially what this thing does is the computer cycles this thing and it's connected to the primary metering rods which sit in the jets and it cycles it on and off very quickly and it's supposed to give you finer tuning of the of the the mixture on the primary side of the carburetor so that's kind of how that works that's and it's pretty simple in fact it's real simple and these things have a couple it has another adjustment here i forgot what this is called it's been a long time since i've worked on one of these carburetors um uh, but normally you never mess with them so uh, it relates to the adjustment of the dwell of this uh, mixture control solenoid. So, and I'm not going to rebuild this carburetor and I'm not going to get into that. I just want to give you an overview of how they work. So if you have one of these, and there's probably not a lot of people that still do, but if you have one, at least you can understand it a little better and know how to do some tuning on it and uh, that kind of thing. And here's the thing about this carburetor. These carburetors are not they're like a <laughs> they're a lot like a fuel injection because they work good on their intended application which is a small displacement v8 engine that you're trying to get good torque and good mileage with but they are they do not lend themselves to modifications like trying to make them richer uh put them on an engine with a big cam it'll never work because that that ecm and everything is just not capable of doing that um, it's like I said, these things. Basically, all you do with one of these carburetors is you tune it. You you tune it as good as you can. You set the TPS like it's supposed to be set, and hopefully you will never have to set the dwell on this uh, MCS control solenoid. And go with that. And the other thing about these things is that they have an extensive array. Of vacuum lines like I said and that all has to be still there it has to you still have to have your oxygen sensor hooked up uh, you still got to have your map sensor hooked up yeah. you still have to use a the computer control distributor you know it all has to be integral you know it can't be part of it disconnected it just won't work because the computer goes into the computer goes into open loop you know whenever you start unhooking wires and crap and the computer defaults back into open loop so it's no longer controlling this mixture uh, basically what happens when you start unplug if you unplug this thing it'll still run but these these uh, what I'm going to show you in the next video these things pop up they're under spring pressure and they pop up to full rich so the carburetor is running full rich all the time on the primary side there's no control over the mixture anymore basically this is like a this is kind of like an electronic power piston is what this is controlled by the computer and that's how it operates so either if you run one of these carburetors you need to run on a stock engine and you need to keep everything hooked back up or hook, or go through all the trouble to hook it up if it was unhooked and that'll hopefully keep your check engine light off and things like that and get you through emissions so okay guys uh, I'm going to cut this one off and let's look inside this thing coming up see ya